740 in the Peach State of Georgia. We're now with about 20% of the vote in. Uh, as you can see, uh, Raphael Warnock still with a commanding lead. Uh, now almost 2 million votes in. The early vote, uh, and thus the early results, especially from Metro Atlanta, tend to favor Raphael Warnock. So it is still too close uh, to call. We bring in Scott Traner, uh, head of data science at Decision Desk HQ, to take us through the evening. Uh, you said uh, at the very beginning of this, you'd a lot rather be Raphael Warnock than Herschel Walker, uh, and that's holding true. Yeah, actually, we're just looking 45 minutes into seeing the results, and it looks like Raphael Warnock is outperforming his uh, his recent vocals uh, a few weeks ago in November. If this holds for the rest of the night, which this this race could be called in the next couple hours, and he could be reelected senator. Well, there 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 you go. That's a fairly uh, succinct uh, analysis as we look at Warnock headquarters right now. Walker campaign says. Uh, the the same the day you know same day election day voting uh, turnout favored them. They saw a surge today and into the afternoon uh, because of people sort of realizing that the difference of a 50-50 Senate and 50-50-49-51 Senate is a little different. Any evidence to support that? You know what? If Walker ends up winning, that statement will be true. But the few data points we have in thus far do not support that. A lot more votes left to count, but the few votes we've seen from precincts that have reported their election day stuff do not support that for Walker. He's doing okay, but he needs to do great. And so far, we don't have anything to support that he's he's doing great. Republicans kind of abandoned him, right, over the past month uh, in, in a major, major way. And Democrats really doubled down on Raphael Warnock. Uh, yeah, President Obama came back uh, in the like. You can see things tightening uh, now a little bit, although those vote totals changed a lot since uh, we last uh, showed them just a couple of minutes ago. So we're getting a little bit uh, of additional data in. Scott, how much does this tell us about Georgia vis-a-vis -vis 2024 presidential race? Well, this, this shows us that Georgia is a true battleground state. When we were looking at this state in 2004, 2008, this was a solid Republican state. Georgia is going to be hotly contested. Um, both at the congressional level, presidential level, Senate level, and gubernatorial level, probably for the next decade. And we could be talking about Georgia just like we talk about Florida in terms of it being a pivotal battleground state in which both candidates, Republican and Democrat, fight over. Well, you, you say the way we talk about Florida, should it be the way we talk about Michigan or Pennsylvania? Because Florida is now R plus 20. It is. It is. It is R plus 20, especially after um, Governor DeSantis won. Florida is still a prize given the amount of uh, electoral votes it has, and there are enough registered Democrats there to make it interesting. To your point about Michigan and Pennsylvania, yep, Georgia's right up there with those, maybe even Ohio, certainly Nevada. Um, it hmm. is the new battleground, for sure. So much of the battleground right now in Georgia is about the African-American vote, and this was supposed to be this really historic election in that you had two African-Americans uh, for United States Senate, something we'd never seen before. Donald Suggs on the program last night talking about why this may not have given us exactly the window into uh, African-American turnout and how the African-American vote would break. Take a listen. Georgia could have two black men running for Senate would be something to celebrate, no? Only if both black men were celebrating being black men. It doesn't count if one of them is kind of on the borderline, not really necessarily uh, emoting that, hey, look, black Atlanta or black Georgia, I'm here for you. He's not even campaigning in counties that are relatively anywhere near majority black. In some counties, we saw Herschel Walker underperform Brian Kemp, the white Republican governor. How do we explain that? <laughs> we don't. Split ticket voting? in the sense that there were Republican voters who voted for Donald Trump, voted for Kemp, but could not bring themselves to vote for Herschel Walker. That's the only explanation. It's the only mathematical outcome. And that's what's, what's really interesting. It shows that voters are elastic, candidates matter. And in a state like Georgia, they may be rock ribbed Republican, but they're willing to look at a Democrat, especially a Democrat as controversial as Raphael Warnock. Thanks for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.